Hey, welcome to Stocks, Tech, and Beer, where we drink drinks and talk about stocks and technology. Uh, today is going to lean more towards the stock end of the spectrum, not a whole lot of technology at all in this session, but I'm going to tell you about the one investment I really hate. Uh, I mean, this is really going to be part one of many, but this is the first. I really hate this investment, and it makes me want to drink, so let's talk about that. Now I'm back in Wisconsin and when you head back here there's really only one beer you got to get as soon as you enter the state and that is a Spotted Cow. Let's see if we can get that in focus here. Now if you're not from Wisconsin or haven't visited the state you probably haven't heard of this because the brewing company New Glarus uh, will sue anybody who tries to sell Spotted Cow outside of the state of Wisconsin. And it's not to be dicks. Uh, even though it kind of sounds like it, but it's because if you do that, then you have to abide by federal brewing regulations, and then the beer is just not going to be as good, not going to be as high of a quality or have as much taste. So I applaud them on that effort, and whenever I come back to the state, definitely seek this out. And, I mean, really every bar has it. Any, any bar with four or more taps is going to have Spotted Cow on tap here in Wisconsin. And it's just something everyone drinks. We're proud of our dairy heritage. Spotted Cow, you know, it's, a, it's a nice, solid wheat beer. Goes down uh, crisp and clean. Really, it tastes like you think beer should taste. Uh, you know, it's got no frills, nothing special. It's just quality wheat beer. Uh, you know, nowadays, a lot of the other breweries with new brewing technology, you know, kind of surpassed it in taste and quality. And so that's going to impact the rating. And, you know, for a nostalgia factor, the Spotted Cow gets a 10 out of 10. But on the new age beer scale, uh, we gotta give it a six out of 10 to keep it real. All right, let's get on with the show. Stocks I hate, part one. The United States Oil Fund, USO. Oh yeah, so I'm not a financial advisor, nothing I say should be taken as financial advice. I mean, I'm really a guy sitting here drinking a beer called Spotted Cow. Uh, I don't know if that displays sophistication or not, but you can decide if you wanna take my advice and you know, just do your homework to make sure it fits into your overall investing plan. USO is supposed to track the price of oil. Oil goes up 1%, the value of USO is supposed to go up 1%. But that doesn't happen. Uh, USO will drastically underperform the price of oil over the long run. Uh, you know, and before I tell you by how much, which will astound you, let me tell you a quick story. So I was uh, interviewing a guy for a job as an analyst at the company I work at right now. And this guy's a financial advisor. He's running money for real people. Real money, real people. And I asked him what his favorite investment was. And he told me it was USO. I was like, really? Why? <laughs> and he goes, you know, tracks the price of oil. Um, and I think oil's going to go up. There's a lot of uncertainty going on in the world, which there was at the time. So I asked the guy, what does USO hold? And he's like, uh, I don't know. Uh, what? <laughs> he's like, yeah, I'm not really sure. I wish I know it tracks the price of oil really well. I mean, but you, you heard me right. The guy recommending this investment had no idea what it held. Because I think if he knew what it held and actually understood it, he would not recommend it for a investment for the long term for anybody, for any reason. Needless to say, he didn't get the job. So what is in the United States oil fund? Um, it holds futures contracts for oil. And futures contracts are a contract that expire. Once a month, these futures contracts expire and you have to go and get the next month if you want to keep having these front month contracts and you have to roll it forward and once a month if roll these contracts forward so it would check the price of crude oil pretty well on a daily basis but the problem i mean now uso doesn't even have those front month contracts because uh in late march early april whenever that was the price of oil went negative for a little bit uh uso futures contracts got hammered really screwed up the market so to alleviate that risk USO went out and decided they wouldn't buy the front month futures contracts could go out two, three, four months, buy those contracts so you wouldn't have that potential liquidity event that brought the price of oil negative in a weird economic situation. So it really doesn't even serve the purpose of tracking the price of oil over the short term anymore. So it, it really is no good at all. So what happens when you have to roll these contracts? So a lot of times what happens is the front month contract let's say it has the price of oil at $40, let's just say it expires tomorrow. So you roll it out, 
to the month forward. And that usually has a price of like, instead of 40, let's say it's got a price of 41. It's a little bit higher. And that roll costs you, you know, that $1 between 40 and 41. And every month you have this problem. You, you lose that little bit, just a, you know, usually a percent or two. But over a period of months, years, that really adds up. And that's the main reason why USO underperforms the crude oil contracts if you just were to buy and hold oil. Um, this, this market structure and commodities is common across any commodity, any futures contract. Um, when the price is higher in the future, it's called contango. Contango is pretty standard to have, especially in the oil markets where you have uh, you know, the time value. Oil is still going to be worth something in a couple months, a couple years. So you have that little things just cost more in the future. It can go the other way. There are rare instances in the oil market where the price of oil going forward is lower than it is now, and that market is called backwardation. Um, backwardation can happen if there's like a, just a weird supply squeeze right now in the market. Um, it's a really, really rare event in the oil markets. Uh, sometimes it happens more in some of these metals or um, soft commodities like grains and corn and stuff like that. But it's really super rare in the uh, in the oil space, and that's why you see products like USO lose value over the long term. Uh, how bad does it underperform? Well, I'm gonna put a chart on the screen here for a little bit and show you exactly how how bad it underperforms. So this is just a 10-year chart going from July 2010 to July 2020. And it shows you that if 10 years ago, if you were able to put $100 exactly into the oil, which is the green line, or USO, which is the white line, what would happen to it? So you can see that the price of oil would have gone down 32%, so from 100 to 68, we'll round up on that. And then you'll see USO went from 100 down to a ridiculous ten dollars and forty eight cents. I mean, it's down ninety, almost ninety percent, and that difference comes from just these rolling of contracts, rolling of the futures, time after time. And you can't even say it had to do with that one weird day where the price of oil went negative and it really clouded the price of USO as well. As you can tell by looking at the chart, it was already underperforming as half the value even before this happened, and then. USO restructured and split its shares or did some reverse merger. I don't know what it did, reverse split. Uh, whatever it did, it really impacted the price. In this fund, the USO is really destined to go to zero in the long run. It is a terrible long-term investment, and I hope uh, any investor will stay away from it. It can maybe act as a trading vehicle if you want something that sort of sort of doesn't track the price of oil. USO is fine on a, a daily basis, maybe even for a week. But I've got a colleague who said it should be illegal to hold USO for more than 20 days. And I, I agree, I might even be a little more, like more than a week, you don't really want it. And especially around roll time, which I believe is the third Friday of each month. You just don't want any part of it then, stay away. Uh, just avoid USO, terrible vehicle, uh, find something else. That's all I got. Cheers, brothers.